that's the best part right there. What's up, Bike Brew fans? I'm here in Slovenia in the capital city of Ljubljana, or as locals call it, simply Ljubljana. It is sunset, obviously. I'm here in front of the Ljubljana Castle, which is kind of the focal point of the city. It sits high above the rest of the city on a mountain, and for many years, their law was nothing could be built higher than this. Now, of course, there are taller buildings throughout the country, but it's an interesting example of how Slovenia came together and sort of missed being damaged in any of the world wars, has a ton of history, arts, music, amazing food scene, great beer, great wine, and even a local gin uh, kind of burgeoning scene there. It's really an amazing place. The funny thing is, we came in and out of Ljubljana Airport, sorry, Ljubljana Airport, and never really got to ride around the city, only to find out here on our last night that there's an amazing set of gravel roads and paths and trails all around the city through nature bogs and just killer stuff. I rode around a little bit today to pick up a few things before we left. And so basically for the past week, my friend Steve and I have been riding around on the new Niners and just exploring the whole country, basically from the coast all the way up into the mountains. And it's an amazing collection of scenery, both gravel roads, trails, single tracks, some pretty rough and early stuff, along with some pretty good pavement sections too that lead up to the Mangart Saddle, for example. So we're gonna show you all the different spots we hit. And honestly, I think after you see this, you're gonna wanna put Slovenia on your list of places to ride. As you fly into Ljubljana, the first thing you notice is how lush and green the country is, and they take great pride in that, and great measures to protect their forests and nature. The city center is divided by the Saba River, with the castle and old town on one side, and the more modern buildings on the other. Originally part of Yugoslavia, Slovenia has everything from universities to libraries to concert halls. It was long a power center, used throughout the centuries as a neutral meeting place by rulers throughout Europe. The country is known for their sausages and cabbage stews, but there's a wealth of other influences here too. Make sure you stay in town on a Friday night to experience their weekly food court, where all the best local restaurants and wineries cook and pour till you can eat no more. And the best part? It's all really affordable. After checking out the city, it's time to build the bikes and head to our first stop, Blood Lake. You can catch a train here, but we recommend renting a van so you can explore more of the country more quickly and still hit the best spots to ride. Technically, you can ride back roads mostly from point to point. Some old World War I supply roads and forest service roads are getting paved over, but there's still plenty of gravel and paths to explore and connect. Bled Lake offers ferries and canoe or stand-up paddleboard rentals, but you can also just swim out to the famous church on the island. It's small, but definitely worth seeing, and the area is so gorgeous you may want to rent a boat and pack a picnic. If you're making a day or two of the area, be sure to check out altitude activities and try via frauda climbing and canyoning. Both can easily be done in a day, and they'll challenge those non-biking muscles for a change of pace. Their guides are amazing, and they provide all the equipment so you can keep that bikepacking load light. Next was a quick stop at the Bled Castle, arguably the oldest castle in Slovenia. It's a medieval castle that overlooks the lake. We saw some of the bees that make delicious Slovenian honey and a view of the mountains we'd soon be riding into. Then we were off to neighboring Bohem Lake for our first ride of the trip. We started the day at Bohin Lake, which is another big lake near Bled Lake, and that's in the Julian Alps region of Slovenia. Kind of the getting up toward the northwestern corner. And we've been on this gravel ride, this gravel road climb now for uh, about 1,500 feet of elevation. We still have a little ways to go. Started at like 1,800 feet, and we're now at about 3,450. And the goal is to get to the top of this mountain area to Zyamniki Meadows, which is 
a wide open area with huge views. And from there, you can decide if you wanna drop down the other side, ride back to Bled, and then catch a train around, or drop back down, go straight back down to Bohean Lake and dip your feet in the water, because it's gorgeous. Bohean is a little bit colder water typically, so in a hot summer day, like it is still, even in mid-September, they're having some kind of record high temperatures. Um, might be the cooler choice. Fortunately, we made some good product decisions on this trip. This Bontrager helmet somehow magically sends the sweat down the sides of my face and not straight down the middle of my face, so I haven't gotten a drop on my sunglasses yet, which is amazing, but it's going all over the Roswell Bento box on top here, and it is thankfully waterproof. From the top of Zajomniki Meadows, you'll get a view that sums up exactly why you should come ride in Slovenia. The mountains, the meadows, the scenery, the rivers, and the riding, it's all simply amazing. We found this little hut village where herders set up camp when it's time to call in the cattle. The riding around here was mostly gravel road, with a bit of cow path and rocky trail at the top. Start earlier in the day and it's the perfect spot for lunch. The danger with any of these rides is that the scenery is so good it's easy to spend hours taking photos or just stopping to take it all in, which left us descending in the dark more than once to get back to our hotel. The locals are all super friendly, as are the cows who really seem to like Steve's Niner. On our second day of riding, we had planned to ascend Versitz, one of Slovenia's more famous mountain passes, then descend into Bovets. Road construction forced us to make a quick detour into Italy, which brought us directly past the Batteria de Salopredil, a World War I defensive fort just on the Italian side of the border that's open for exploration. It's almost overlooking Lago de Perdil, which is a gorgeous spot to swim if you make it this far west. With a big day planned for tomorrow, we did a quick recon ride along the river to explore the dirt roads leading in and out of Bovets. Bovets sits along the Soca River, one of the most beautiful and famous rivers in Slovenia. Just outside of town, the Karitnica River merges with it, so we followed it to Fort Clues in Tree Lab National Park. Just so beautiful. The fort stands on the spot where, in 1797, Napoleon Bonaparte led an invasion to claim this area for France. Since then, it served as a defensive position, giving whichever country was in control at the time a broad view of anyone trying to come up the valley below. Across the street is a trail that leads through a bunkered tunnel which leads to Fort Herman, another World War I fort buried deep in the woods, all of which is yours to explore.
The road to Mangart Saddle is in out and back, with an optional loop at the top just in case the several thousand meters of climbing to get to this point left you wanting more. We hiked to the saddle for these amazing views, then refueled at the refuge hut with traditional sausage and cabbage stew before starting the wicked fast descent back down. Basically, the six mile climb netted almost 2,800 feet of elevation gain and took us about an hour and 10 minutes to climb, but we made it back down in 18 minutes. The road is not quite wide enough for two cars, so we'd advise caution, but we still hit well over 40 miles per hour throughout the descent. Stop and get your photos and sightseeing done on the way up because you will not want to stop on the way down. If you've never heard of Mangart Saddle or Versets Pass, or the Julian Alps, that's okay. They're not typically on Slovenia's must-visit list for average tourists, but for cyclists, consider these bucket list locations that you simply must hit anytime you want to ride gravel or road. There's so many connecting trails in this area that get you to this spot that you can explore really for days and days, or just plan one big ride, then take a day off to do some of the other amazing things in the area. We stashed our Mission Workshop windbreakers in the Roswell frame bag, which was a good call. It's cold and windy up top, and they provided just the right coverage for the long descent back to Bovets. There's an area to park just across the huge bridge connecting Bovets and Mangart, which is where we started from but then we rode all the way back down the hill to check out the small villages along the way. At the end of the ride, we went for a quick and very cold plunge in the Sota River, the immaculately clear product of melted snow filtered through miles and miles of limestone. If you're looking for other things to do in the area, there's also a huge waterfall nearby with hiking trails and other outdoor activities around the Sota River Valley area. The next day, we started with lunch at the Agriturismo Abram farmhouse on Nanos Plateau, which sits above the Vipava wine region. The meal was amazing, and like most all of our food here, extremely affordable with massive portion sizes. While my family took naps near the animals, Steve and I headed off to ride the top of the plateau. The roads to the top were steep, and either rough or full-on rocky gravel, and they provide a gorgeous view of the Gulf of Trieste and the Adriatic Sea. They also lead to a famous church that's popular for weddings. Time it right on a weekend and you might just be offered cake, wine, or champagne, or all three. From the church, there's a gnarly network of rocky paths headed back down the side of the plateau, which run mostly adjacent to the road, or so we thought. Nano's Plateau wasn't on our original itinerary, so we didn't have it mapped out on canoe and loaded into our computers. But we do love an adventure, so we just kept heading west, assuming we'd intersect with the road soon enough. As the sun started to set, and with little cell service and only a preloaded Google map to guide us, we decided we'd better find the road another way. This is like legit single tracks. Do we know where we're going? Sometimes you just gotta do a little bushwhacking to get back to where you wanna go. Because you get totally lost. We ended up making an educated guess and rewarded with an absolutely bonkers good descent made possible only because we had finally remembered to strap the Bontrager flare lights onto our handlebars that morning. You know when you come around a corner and you see this? That's a great way to end a ride.
Day five was heavy on sightseeing. We started at Hotel Jama, which sits adjacent to the Postonia Cave, one of two absolutely amazing caves you simply must visit in Slovenia. It starts with a train tour before walking you past formations that are millions of years old. From there, it's a short up and down ride through the countryside to get to another of Slovenia's most famous attractions, Predjama Castle. Predjama Castle was first built in the 12th century, but was added to and expanded well into the 20th century before its current owners opened it up for tourism. Built into the side of a cliff, it provided a strategic sanctuary for its owners, who could escape danger by hiking through the tunnels behind it and pop out in the next city over. It's worth a tour to hear the history and see all the rooms, and be sure to hike down below it to see the secret entrances too. On our final ride day, we got super lost, beautifully lost. Relying on my GPS computer to route us from our apartment to a park on Slovenia's short coastline, it tried to take us on what can only be described as non-existent hiking trails. Surprisingly though, many of the farm roads and access trails were on the map, helping us stay off the main roads leading to the coast. We went through vineyards and hunting fields, past medieval churches and wineries, and found some of the most delicious roadside figs on a monster climb. Once on top of the hill, it was a long, fast descent all the way to the coast. Views of the sea confirmed we were on the right track as we passed through small villages and farms. Once there, we hugged the shoreline and looped from the southernmost corner of coast, past aqua farms, yachts, beaches, and hotels, around to Peran. <laughs> Peran is the hub of Slovenia's coast, with shops, hotels, and tons of great seafood restaurants. The best part of it are the back alleys, which are a ton of fun to explore on a gravel bike. So that was our tour of the country, and to be honest, we want to come back. There's so much more here to see. This uh, country also has seven bike parks for something the size of a small state in the U.S. Having seven bike parks along with other mountain bike trails throughout is an amazing resource. The people here are super friendly. The food is cheap, the beer is cheap, the wine is cheap. It's, it's really just an affordable place to come with all of your friends. So our original plan was to ride point to point to point and see a few things and then the tourism department made some other recommendations that got us a guide so we actually ended up shuttling in a van to some of the highlights and then riding around more and we'll put maps to all of the stuff that we did along with the maps of our original planned routes on the full story on bikerumor.com so you can check out and kind of pick and choose how you want to do your adventure so with a little bit of frame bags it's pretty easy here to do credit card bike packing and just bring the bare essentials and then stop somewhere for food and snacks and lodging along the way. It's the way we did it with the van, it was great because I was able to bring my family along and we were able to see a little bit more than we could have in one week just by bike. And of course there were things that our guide pointed out that we never would have known. So the cool thing is we'll have all the information on the site so you can do it any way you want and you've got to put Slovenia on your list. Safety roll. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty gnarly little roots. <laughs> That's a good shot. You can shot. drink this, right? <laughs> 
Thanks for watching. If you like this video, check out more on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash bike rumor. Hit like, hit subscribe. If you have questions about this trip, leave them in the comments or leave them in the comments on the story on bike rumor. And we'll do our best to answer. If there's something we left out or if you're curious about some of the places we went, we'd be happy to help uh, fill in the story for you. Until next time, keep the rubber side down.